Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Cam back at you again. Today I'm going to be showing you my Charvel guitar collection, the ones that personally belong to me. As a lot of you know, I've come from a family of collectors and I'm going to be showing you the ones that I've been lucky enough to acquire over the years. And in this video I want to clarify very quickly, obviously we're in a, a world where people are really struggling due to the coronavirus and economic breakdown. In this video, I'm not like, showing off like, hey, look at me, look what I've got. It's not this kind of video at all. A lot of people ask me about what I have and want to know some of the stories and how I've collected these things. In this video, I just thought I'd share with you what I have just to entertain the curious and the people who are fascinated by this for the love of guitar geekdom and Charvel guitars. And all I want to say right away while well, watching this video, wherever you are, I hope everyone's staying safe, taking care of themselves, and I wish you all the very best through this crazy shit time. Take care, and let's enjoy this video. <laughs> No better place to start than at the very beginning. This is the first Charvel that I ever got. This one's seen here in candy blue. This is my Made in Japan San Dimas. And it's basically the guitar I cut my teeth on. I'm a very, very lucky guy to have this guitar. It was made in 2011 thereabouts. I got it in April 2012. And I'm guessing it was one of the last guitars made in Japan. It sounds awesome. I really, really love it. It's unique in many regards to my other Charvels. And it's made closer to the American spec. It's not got the thumb wheel truss rod adjustment, it's been modded with a D-tuner, it's got the Seymour Duncan JB and 59 screwed straight in, and it's got a quarter saw maple neck as opposed to the flat saw maple necks you see on the modern San Dimas's. I love these guitars. Each one came with a case like these next to me, and they were just a superb value for money, and we got it at a really cheap price because it was among the last to be sold at Rich Tone Music, which is where I got it. And also, it's quite a nice, unique colour, I think. I don't tend to see too many of these on the web, and I think they're really, really cool. There we go. Candy. <laughs> This is a DK24 two point, seen here in satin orange crush. I really love this guitar, and it certainly is different in many regards to the Charvel San Dimas and SoCal's I'm known for using, because it's got obviously the dinky body shape, which is, I think, two thirds of a Fender Strat. It's seven eighths or something like that. It's, it's smaller than a Strat, subtly. And also, it's got the super contoured healing on the back. It's a really diverse guitar in terms of sonic quality. You've got obviously HSH layout, five way switch, and also the first guitar I ever got with a caramelized maple neck. And a fun fact for you guys this is the uh, very same guitar that is featured in the Andertons review. It's the exact same one. And I got this guitar as a demo guitar from Fender just as I started to work with Charvel, not endorsed or anything like that. It's just a circumstance, I suppose. It's obviously the guitar that was out for review and could have been the guitar that was at the NAMM show, but who am I to know that? Made in Mexico, as I say again, all of my Charvels, apart from the Japanese ones, are Mexican. I don't own a USA-made Charvel. I don't need to. Really, really nice guitar. Absolutely superb. Love it. And it's got cracks and all sorts on it because obviously it did the show circuit. Such a cool guitar. And also, if you ever buy a... 
Charvel DK24 two point with a roasted neck. It's got a unique smell when you get it out of the box. It starts to wear away the more that you play it, but it's got a really, really nice neck profile as well. They're different from the other Sandemuses and SoCals. And also you've got the lumen lays on the side that glow in the dark, which is really, really neat. And plus it's got the two point trim, so I can channel my inner Hank Marvin if I need to. It's really, really cool. Great guitar. <laughs> Here is the other DK24 two point, and it's exactly the same as the previous guitar, except this one is in primer grey, so basically the colour of a Eurofighter Typhoon, but also it has a custom flat strat in the neck as opposed to another humbucker. And I really love the sound of these guitars. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to know this, but the DK24s, both the Floyd Rose versions and the two point versions, have the Seymour Duncan full shred in, which is less powerful than a JB. And in terms of sonic quality, the orange one and this one just nail early Van Halen. Despite not having a Floyd Rose, I'm not that bothered about that in this case with these guitars. But it just sounds awesome. It's got a completely different setup to the other one. It's got a much lower action, but also gives me the chance to really go wild and a little bit crazy with the clean sounds. Because the guitars are built to be as diverse as possible, these particular ones. And the HH ones that you see of these now are even more diverse than this. And uh, they're just superb. I really, really love them. So I thought I'd show you that one. This is the first DK24 two point I got from Charvel to demo. And I ended up buying it from them. It's really, really cool. Love this guitar very much. Again, made in Mexico. A superb, superb guitar. Love it. <laughs> Now, the first of the Neon guitars. This is the Neon Pink Sandemus from 2016. Really love this guitar. It's when basically Charvel revamped all of their specifications and basically stripped back any unhelpful characteristics and went all out with making the best rock guitar you can buy, I suppose. Uh, I, this, that's just my opinion, I suppose. But I really, really love the way these are done. Also, you've got the Floyd Rose FRT-1000. They feel different to the Japanese models and anything else they've played. They're slightly sort of clunk-free. Or you get a little bit. They're a lot better made, I think. But also, you've got six the six-pack of sound where you get six tonal options as opposed to three. You've got a blade switch, which I thought was really, really cool because I'm not a fan of toggle switches myself. And also, neon pink. Uh, I mean, who doesn't like neon pink? I mean, especially if you want to make a presence or be remembered. Uh, like, it's just one of those things, you know, if, if you don't remember what the player looks like, you remember the guitar. And it's certainly the case with neon pink stuff, I think. It sounds really, really great. I love it. These more modern Sandemuses have flat sawn maple necks and graphite reinforcement running through the middle, so they're uber stable, despite not having caramelized maple necks or indeed a quarter sawn neck, which is apparently more sturdy. But it's one of those things. Plus, you've got the thumb wheel truss rod adjustment, something borrowed from the Warren D. Martini signature, Guthrie Govan model, EVH stripe series, whatever. It was a new feature for, from them, which I really, really like. And the split coil sounds are just heaven in this guitar. They're really, really great. And also, I've played this guitar a lot. Look at the fretboard. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely awesome. Great for channeling my inner Steel Panther, I have to say.
here is the other neon guitar. This one's neon yellow, and I really, really like this one. This one sounds better than the other one, in my opinion. It's a little louder and a little beefier. And keep in mind, it's exactly the same specifications as the pink one. They're both completely stock. However, this guitar's got a smoother neck. Action's a little bit lower. But also, uh, this guitar has a little bit of a story to it. As I say, again, I buy most of my guitars second hand. And that way I can get some real bargains. And this certainly is one of them. Uh, this one is just superb. And I ended up getting this guitar from a little guy in, uh, I want to say a little guy, I mean, he must have been about 13, he, was, he did the whole sale on his own, he was awesome. Uh, but this was from, sort of, South Derbyshire, and he was basically selling this guitar, the original price was 225 quid on eBay. Uh, it went up and up and up, uh, when I say up, up and up, I mean we're crawling by the pound, <laughs> until uh, it got to the end of the auction, where it, st it was still on 285 pound, and then to secure the bid, I went in 325 and got it, and not bad for a guitar that retails for the best part of 750 to 850 pounds. Quite a steal, especially when it's all original, and these neon ones are really hard to come by now. And not only that, um, because at the time when I got this guitar, I just passed my driving test, and I wasn't confident enough to drive in the winter to Derbyshire to get it. I've had the guitar for three years now, and we ended up going there, uh, I don't know, early evening and then we ended up basically getting lost on the way there. It was in this tiny little hamlet in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we had to cross a really narrow bridge to be able to get to it and then when we came back uh, we went through the heaviest or thickest fog I've ever witnessed in a car. You couldn't see the end of the bonnet and it was one of those ones where you're fearing you've got to get home alive type thing especially when you're coming over the Derbyshire Dales it was terrifying but yeah that's what I will always remember with this guitar the journey back and although it's not quite as dramatic. It's also the guitar I took with me to the BBC. I went and did a short tour with them. I did the Bite Size Schools tour with it, which I thought was really, really fun to do. Anyway, on to the next guitar. So here we have the Charvel everybody asks me about. This is Snow White. And this was bought as a second-hand bargain, I suppose, from a shop in Stevenage, UK, as a damaged good. I paid very, very little money for it. And basically, it was not an, a truly original product either, because it already had the EMGs installed. Now, this is the Zach Wilde EMG set, uh, which I thought was really cool, especially in a Japanese-made SoCal which you didn't see too many of at that point. I always wanted a white guitar, and I thought it looked superb. I loved it, especially with the black scratch plate. It looked like Jakey e. Lee to me, and it sounds awesome. Uh, I didn't actually install these. As I say again, these were bought with the pickups already in there, and they sound great. I mean, not only for the riffing, but for the clean sounds as well. Actives just nail it for that stuff. And underneath here, uh, it's just a spaghetti junction of wires. So much work was obviously done to get these pickups in. And all of the electrics have been gutted from it. They've, done, they've been done really, really well. And it's basically my sort of power metal machine, I suppose. It sounds really, really big for that stuff. Plus, I string this guitar with tens because I tune the guitar a half step down. So it's quite slinky, but it feels really, really good. I can still hit it quite hard for the rhythms, which I think is really, really cool. Love this guitar. I basically got this for my 17th birthday. I don't think it, um, God, it might have been, I don't know, 350 or something we got it for. It was under 400 pounds. I remember that much. And it's just super, love it. One of my absolute favorites for sure. Awesome. Now, here we have the rarest Charvel I own. This is the Charvel Superstock SoCal in silver metal flake. Apparently, not 100% sure, they only made 90 of these worldwide and only a handful came to the UK. And I got this through Sounds Great Music a long time ago. 
Uh, the video where most people have seen this guitar and have asked me about it by saying, what on earth is that, is uh, when I did the Yamaha THR32 review for Yamaha. I took this guitar with me for that. Uh, it sounds awesome. Really, really love it. It's also one of the, uh, it's a bit of a wild, I want to say a wild card. It's, it feels unlike the rest. It's got a very, very thin neck. Uh, it's, it seems to have a much bigger sound than anything I've really, really got in terms of my Charvels. It competes with the Japanese guitars in terms of beefiness, but also it's got a, um, uh, an, an interesting sort of sort of story, I suppose. I, ha I used to have this guitar out an awful lot. It was just lying around, but it's changed colour. It's now gone to more of a champagne colour. Don't know how well that comes across on camera, but the actual silveriness of it used to match the tremolo, sort of the bridge, in terms of its chrome silveriness. And it's really, really great guitar. And certainly a hard guitar to find now. And it's got a Seymour Duncan JB59 in, as opposed to the DiMarzio, uh the DiMarzio Evolution and Tone Zone uh, pickups, which you find in the Japanese models, or the Seymour Duncan Distortions that you see in the SoCals now, which I think is really cool. Plus, it was the last time that Charvels would put the, on the SoCals, that is, they'd put the jack socket there, like on a conventional strap. Now, it's down here, like it would be on a Sandemus, just in case you didn't notice. So yeah, a really, really cool guitar, and certainly a rare one. And also it's got a rosewood board as well, which is something you don't see too often nowadays either, for obvious reasons. There we go. <laughs>
and I'm very, very lucky to have this guitar. I actually took this guitar with me when I did a short tour with the BBC, and a lot of you guys um, commented on it, and a lot of my uh, prospective students saw it and thought, smart. You know, I'm really, really lucky to have this guitar, and it's perfect. Love it.